don't look back. And music by Larmes de Colère, a French group, French trio from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Satchel Page, Don't Look Back. Written by David A. Adler, illustrated by Terry Widener. For Itzy and Irene, DAA, to Frank M., a great baseball fan. Only one person can pitch like me. I could nip Frosten off a cake with my fastball. Satchel Page may have been the best pitcher ever. He pitched thousands of games during a lifetime in baseball, and he won most of them. For most of his career, though, he was kept out of the big show, the major leagues. Until the 1940s, the major leagues were for whites only. Satchel Page was an African American. Leroy Satchel Page was born in Mobile, Alabama, the seventh of 11 children of Lula and John Page. His mother was a cleaning woman, and his father was a gardener. For many years, Satchel Page, for many years, Page let reporters and fans guess about his age. The mystery was fun and good publicity. Later, Page explained it by saying, age is a question of mind over matter. If you don't mind, it don't matter. Once his playing days were done, he admitted to having been born on July 7, 1906. The Page family was poor, so when Leroy was seven, he found work at the train depot. He rigged up a pole and some rope to carry several bags and satchels at once for busy travelers. Some said he looked like a walking satchel tree. From then on, he was known as Satchel Page. Page also worked sweeping up at a local baseball field. He watched games there and got interested in playing. He didn't own a baseball, so he practiced by throwing rocks. He had a real talent for it. When he was 10, he joined his school's team. At first, he played in the outfield, but the coach saw how well he could throw a baseball. Soon, he was the team's top pitcher. Soon, he was the top pitcher. Page didn't like to study or go to class, but he loved to play baseball. The only thing he was sure to be in school the only time he was sure to be in school was when there was a baseball game. Otherwise, he spent time in the streets with his friends, and sometimes they got into trouble. When Page was 12, he was arrested for stealing a handful of rings from a toy store, and he was sent to reform school in Mount Meigs, Alabama. Page was never bitter about spending more than five years in reform school. When you grow up as poor as me, he said, a place like Mount Meigs can be mighty warm and good. He played baseball there and impressed the coach who told him, that arm may do you some good someday. The coach was right. Page was 17 when he got out of Mount Meigs and he needed to work. He went to the manager of the local semi-pro black baseball team, the Mobile Tigers. Page showed him how well he played and he got a job pitching. No one else pitched like Satchel Page. He looked to the side, cranked his arms several times, leaned all the way back, kicked his large left foot high up, and then threw the ball. He invented his own pitches, the blooper, the looper, the drooper, the hesitation pitch, wobbly ball, trouble ball, nothing ball, and a whipsy dipsy do. His favorite pitch was the bee ball, which buzzed like a bee past the batter. Page loved the game and he wanted to play in the major leagues, but no team would take him because he was black. So instead he played with other great African-American ball players in the Negro Baseball Leagues. He bounced from teams in Alabama to North Dakota, Cuba, Mexico, and elsewhere, always playing for the team that paid him the most money. And wherever he played, African-American fans gathered by the thousands to watch the great Satchel Page. He once said that if the all-white Yankees and the all-white Philadelphia Phillies were in one Philadelphia stadium and he were in another, he would draw a bigger crowd. You got to understand, said Connie Johnson, a pitcher in the Negro Leagues and later in the Major Leagues, he was like Babe Ruth to us, but he was our Babe Ruth. Each fall, 
After the baseball season ended, all white Major League All-Star teams were formed. Those teams played against local semi-pro teams, both black and white. Page pitched on the local teams, sometimes to the greatest white ball players of his generation. They knew how good he was. Joe DiMaggio called Satchel Page the best and fastest pitcher I have ever faced. Ted Williams said Satch was the greatest pitcher in baseball. In the mid-1930s, Dizzy Dean was the best pitcher in the major leagues. He told Page, you're a better pitcher than I ever hoped to be. Page's talent didn't shield him from racism on the field. Players on an all-white semi-pro team once called him overrated and made racial remarks about him. Page was furious. He knew it was only bigotry that kept him out of Major League Baseball, so he decided he would teach those players a lesson by beating their team all by himself. Page had his teammates sit down on the field, and then he threw nine strikes in a row, three straight strikeouts. The white players apologized. Page wasn't a bitter man, but he knew he was being cheated. Most newspapers didn't report on his games. Many white baseball fans didn't even know his name. Page wasn't afraid to speak out. In a 1942 newspaper report, he reminded people that baseball fields weren't the only places closed to him and other African Americans. At the time, there were also schools, parks, hotels, and jobs close to blacks. Even if he were able to play with the whites, Page complained, he still couldn't stay or eat with them in many places. Throughout much of Page's career, there was talk of change of opening the major leagues to people of all races. But it wasn't until 1947 that Jackie Robinson, an African-American college man and former track star, joined the major league Brooklyn Dodgers. By then, Page was 40 years old, but he was more determined than ever to stay in the game. We don't stop playing because we get old, he said. We get old because we stop playing. Still, he knew that age would catch up with him one day. I'm just praying I get into the big show before my speedball loosens. In October 1947, Page married longtime sweetheart Lahuma Brown. She was with him the next year when he was invited to try out for the Major League Cleveland Indians. You can do it, Lahuma told him. You know you can. She was right. On July 7, 1948, on Satchel Page's 42nd birthday, he signed with the Cleveland Indians. His determination had paid off. After 25 years as one of baseball's best pitchers, Satchel Page had finally reached the major leagues. Two days later, in the middle of a game against the St. Louis Browns, Page had his first chance to play. The fans went wild as he walked slowly to the pitcher's mound. Reporters and photographers were there to capture the excitement. Flashbulbs popped. Page was overcome with emotion. His nerves, he later said, were jumping every which way. He knew he wasn't pitching just for his team, but also for African Americans elsewhere, everywhere. Page didn't disappoint his team or his fans. In 1948, he won six games and lost only one. He had helped the Cleveland Indians reach the World Series for the first time in almost 30 years they would play the Boston Braves. Page was anxious to play in the World Series and his fans were anxious too. They shouted, we want Satchel, we want Satchel. But throughout the first four games, he was kept on the bench. Finally, in the seventh inning of the fifth game with the Indians way behind, Page had his chance. He would be the first African American to pitch in the World Series. He stretched, he waited, he shook his fingers. The umpires came out three times to remind him of the rules. Page forced himself to forget about the thousands of cheering fans and the many more at home sitting by the radios and listening to the game. He told himself he had a pitching job to do. Page got the first batter to hit a fly ball to the outfield that was caught for an out. He threw the next batter his real trouble ball and got him out on a ground ball to end the inning.